Bravo. What a delightful display of magic. My court and I are always thrilled when you come to town, mage. As king, I give you my thanks for entertaining us. As much as I would love a repeat performance, I'm afraid my court has other things that must be attended to. But there is one matter I'd like to discuss with you. With your magical expertise, I thought that perhaps you could advise me on the kingdom's recent lightning mine infestation. In the interest of not holding up the court any longer, I will discuss it with you on the way out while they proceed with matters. So, these lightning mites have started breeding uncontrollably. Do you know anything about their mating habits? I wondered if... Are we being watched? <laughs> Good. Now, come on. We'll head over to my chambers. I made sure the guards aren't patrolling heavily along the way. There. Come here. It's been so long since you came through. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you were avoiding me. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know you're crazy for me. I mean, who could blame you? I might be a bit older than you, but I am royalty. How could a darling little mage such as yourself resist an eligible king? <laughs> so cheeky. Alright, I suppose that's enough fooling around. We better. Oh, that's just not fair. Oh, I'd love to just enjoy your company. But that cursed lore master is starting to get suspicious, I think. Oh, relax. Without solid evidence, there's nothing they could do. And we're not about to be outsmarted by that ancient fossil anytime soon. You become a lore master by being obsessed with how things were done back in the old days. Not by being clever. Alright, well, I'm afraid we're going to have to wait a little longer before we can be together. Well, in public, anyway. I know. Every day we're apart just burns me up. But if the lore master declares me illegitimate... There would be a coup. Lore Master is only a ceremonial role, but people trust them to maintain tradition. And being in a relationship with a commoner, that would definitely be against tradition. Thank heavens I'm not already married, or things would be simply impossible to fix. There are still times that I just want to just banish him. But of course, it's not really about the Lore Master. It's those insurgents who want to dethrone me. The lore master is just easy to bribe. If we can get rid of him, they might actually replace him with somebody that's competent. And that's the part that's giving me trouble. I didn't think they'd be nearly this hard to find as they are, given how easily I found out they were working with the lore master. I suppose in the end, that was due to his blundering, not the insurgents. But don't worry, I will root them out. Once that's finished, I'll be able to make knowledge of our love public. Not that half the royal court doesn't already suspect us, but they can gossip all they like. It makes no difference. Anyway, for now we'll have to maintain secrecy. It is a little fun, though, sneaking around behind everybody's back. Don't you think so? What's the matter? You seem so somber. What do you mean, can't visit me anymore? Why would you say that? Oh, that's right. I heard they were closing their borders. But what about the other route? Bandits. Is my kingdom the only one that patrols its roads properly? Still, I'm not sure why that would prevent us from seeing each other. It just means you can't travel. Ah, I see. You can't be a traveling mage if you can't travel. And if you get a different job... You lose your excuse to visit the castle. Well, that's not a problem. In fact, it might be an opportunity. After all, you are beloved by me and my court. If you can't travel for your work anymore, why, it would only be natural to come to your aid. <laughs> I was thinking about doing this anyway. I could make you my court magician. Think of it. You could live here. With me. Hmm. Just think of it. Just perform for me every so often, and I'll be able to pamper you like you deserve. 
No more living in a wagon. Think. Silk sheets and down-filled pillows. Every single night. Why, I might even get you some of your own. Though I doubt you'll get much use out of them. <laughs> Look at you blush. I can't wait to see more of that flustered face. No, oh, don't worry. Like I said, it's a completely normal thing. I mean, you are a bit young for a court magician, but everyone knows you already, so it won't seem that strange. We haven't had one in a long time, not since the incident with the toads. I feel like you should be more excited, love. Don't you want to spend more time with me? The risk? Oh, you worry wart. We'll be fine. I already told you. Don't let paranoia keep you from being happy. Shh. Push away those thoughts. Listen. First of all, it might not actually be the end of the world if the lore master found out. Well, there is a certain someone who owes me. I could call in a favor. They could cover up the whole thing. But, well, that would be a really big favor. And I'd much rather save it for something else. So it's not as though you could ever be responsible for me losing the throne. I can take care of it if I need to. But you know, I would give it all up for you. If I needed to. You mean everything to me. Do you remember when we met? I had just rejected my final marriage candidate. For years, I was presented with vain, selfish, awful people who were only considered eligible for me because they had royal blood. And on that day, the last possible option came before me. And I said no. They disgusted me. Them and all the others. Everyone was in a panic. They urged me, begged me to reconsider so I could have an heir. I sent them all away. And called for anybody who could distract me from my frustration. I was told there was a young traveling mage in town. I agreed without thought. I didn't really care at that time. I'm ashamed to say that I don't remember much of your performance. I just brooded the whole time. I'm sure you recall I even left early. I was just pacing around the castle. But after you finished, you came and checked on me. At first I thought you were just worried you had offended me somehow, but there was real concern for me in your voice. You were just worried for me, as a person. Never in my life has someone treated me that way. I couldn't bring myself to tell you what was on my mind, despite your thoughtfulness. So you wished me well and conjured a rose for me. As far as I was concerned, that sealed the deal. After that, well, I'm sure I don't need to remind you of that night. You're special to me. You treat me like nobody else ever has. And for that reason, I want to treat you like nobody else ever has. You deserve a life of luxury and ease. And I'm in a position to give that to you. I'll stop at nothing to give you the happiness you deserve. Just as you've made me happy. You're worth the risk. Uh oh, I know those footsteps. Quick, in the closet. Ah, lore master. My apologies for not returning. I... I was feeling faint. Yes, yes, the mage left. Actually, there is something I want to discuss with the court about them. But that can wait until I'm feeling better. Your concern is noted, but the mage is perfectly trustworthy, and I am well within my rights to enjoy their performances. Now, leave me. Alright, you can come out now. I suppose you better go. But you'll be back soon. I'll send my servant to meet you at the Sleeping Ogre Inn. They'll provide you with a room there until I can arrange for you to move into the castle. But, before you go, just one more guess. Until next we meet, darling. It's been so long, dear. How have you been? Have you been staying safe on your travels? Oh, don't be like that. I know that you're a very talented mage. 
but I can't help but worry about you. Powerful though you may be, you could still be taken by surprise. I wish you'd let me assign a guard to accompany you on your excursions. I suppose it's good that you're cautious about raising suspicion, but I really think you ought to take advantage of our relationship a bit. I mean, you won't accept royal protection, you don't stay in the palace, and you keep asking me not to give you gifts. How am I supposed to spoil you if you won't indulge yourself even a little bit? Well, of course I need to spoil you. A charming, talented thing like you. You can have anyone you wanted, but you chose me. Sure, that may be royalty, but we have to sneak around all the time. Not to mention the age gap. Fine, slight age gap. Well, I'm happy that part doesn't bother you, but you're still risking your life just to be with me. What sort of lover would I be if I didn't shower you with gifts for being so brave and thoughtful? Hmm. You know just what to say, sweet thing. Such flattery only serves to prove my point, though. You might say you only need me, but it's my obligation to make sure you receive what you deserve, not merely what you need. <laughs> How cute. You don't have to be so modest with me, though. You should feel at ease when you're with me. Don't you think? Of course, the sneaking around makes that difficult. Always having to worry about our secret romance being exposed to the public can be so exhausting. That's what this little surprise of mine is all about. Mm-hmm. We're almost there. I'm sure you've been dying to know why I'm bringing you out to the countryside. Thank you for indulging me. Ah, it's in sight. Take a look, dearest. Can you see it? That's right. I purchased a secret retreat for the two of us. We'll be able to meet more discreetly now, without having to sneak past guards all the time. Well, of course we need some guards. A royal can't leave the palace without protection, but I've managed to select a small group that I can trust to remain perfectly confidential. Good thinking, but there's no need to worry about that. I've kept it a secret from the lore master and most others, but it won't be a problem if this place is discovered. I have the perfect cover for us. On paper, this retreat is a safe house, a place to flee to during difficult times. If anyone learns about its existence, they will be bound by law not to divulge anything about it. My guards will see to that. As for why I would visit it frequently, we'll say that I'm spending time here occasionally to throw off would-be assassins. Being unpredictable, not always staying in the palace. I don't know if that would actually be effective or not, but it's believable that I could be trying it. And the way you factor in is quite simple. You're just here to check for curses. It's not terribly common for assassins to use magic since magic studies take up so much time that could be spent on more practical training, but it's not unheard of. So we can simply say that you're an extra layer of security. And of course, all that is just to be extra, extra careful. I don't intend for anyone to discover that we're even here. That's why I'm dressed so differently, and why we're using such a simple carriage. Most people think I'm in a decoy carriage, headed to oversee some ceremony somewhere else. This is going to be so much better. We have a whole mansion to ourselves. We can finally enjoy ourselves without having to look over our shoulders. Although, I do regret that this is even necessary. The harder we try to unearth those dissidents that want me dethroned, the further down they bury themselves. If not for them, I could simply declare the tradition of royalty-only mages to be outdated, and we could be wed right away. It's been taking so much longer than I ever expected. I'm starting to wonder if we'll ever be able to make our love public. <laughs> okay, keeping it a secret is kind of fun, but a bit tiring, too. Here we are. Isn't it wonderful? It's no palace, of course, but it's more than comfortable enough for royalty, and people that will someday become royalty. But the best part about this mansion isn't the mansion itself. It's how far away it is from anyone else. There's nobody around to see us aside from the guards. I can even do this. We've never kissed outside before. I can kiss you here. I can kiss you at the front door. I can kiss you in the main hall. 
In fact, I can kiss you absolutely anywhere now. And I intend to. <laughs> so cute. I didn't know you could blush so fiercely. I'd better not tell you about my plans for later, or you might faint, poor thing. Hmm, curious. It's going to have to stay a secret for now, though. For now, let's get something to eat. It's been a long journey. Oh, that's right. Naturally, we have staff here as well. They've been similarly vetted for discretion. By the smell, I'd say they have dinner just about ready for us. Hmm? Oh, that's right. I can see why you'd be so nervous. We just went from having no one knowing about us to having a whole group of guards and servants privy to our little secret. Well, you see, I found a way around that problem already. I've been carefully planting rumors all over the kingdom that I'm romantically involved with various people. It stung a bit, I'll be honest, but it was necessary for our safety. If anyone hears a servant gossiping that they've seen you and I kissing, they'll think it's just one more of those baseless rumors. Unless someone the lore master finds trustworthy says anything, we're safe from scrutiny. Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry about that, dearest. People gossip about royalty all the time. It's not a serious issue, really. There are more important things to worry about, like how we're going to spend our time. There are stables out back. Have you ever gone horse riding before? Oh, no need to worry. It's completely understandable. Many people find the idea intimidating, sweetie. There are plenty of other things to do together, and you can always change your mind later. We have the whole weekend, after all. Whoops, and there I go. Ruining the next part of the surprise already. I was planning to tell you over dinner. Well, I suppose now you know why I asked you to not make any plans for the weekend. I suppose you might have already guessed anyway, but yes, I was hoping that we could spend a few days here, together. I won't force you, of course, but we've never had an opportunity like this before. We've always had to steal an hour or two where we could, to be able to spend a whole day with you. And better yet, a whole night. Well, nothing could make me happier right now. Yes. Oh, excuse me. I'm just very, very happy you agreed. I love you so much. And I know you love me back, but... You so often err on the side of caution that I was worried you'd insist on leaving early. Don't get me wrong. I know it's because you love me and you want to keep me safe. But if we're too safe, then we won't even be able to enjoy each other's company. That's why I'm just so thrilled that I'm finally going to have you all to myself for a while. <laughs> You're giving me so many cute reactions today, sweetie. Do you like it when I call you mine? Because you really are, you know. As far as I'm concerned, you belong to me. Mind, body, and soul. And all it cost me was to give all of myself to you in return. Quite the bargain, if you ask me. Well, so long as you think I'm equal in worth, then that's all that matters. You've always been so sweet like that. And I know that when you say that, you're not even considering my status as royalty. You've always seen past that. You love me for me. And that's something that nobody else has ever been able to offer. Now come along. I don't think I can stand another second of smelling that delicious meal. Let's eat, and then we can figure out something fun to do, my love. Love, wake up. Wake up. Shh. Stay quiet. It seems there's someone outside. Someone I don't recognize. It's alright. The guards are dealing with it. But I need you awake and alert. If it comes to it for any reason, you'll need to sneak out. I'd rather not come to that, of course. I chose this place for us because of how isolated it is. But I suppose the downside is that if there's anyone else out there, it'd be difficult for you to get away without being seen. But better than the two of us being caught in bed together. It shouldn't have to be this way. I'm the king, for goodness sake. To think I have to sneak around this way just because of a few dissidents. It's absolutely absurd. 
But of course, what's worse is that you have to be caught up in all of it. There are times where I wonder if it would be better for me to send you away so you don't have to. Shh, no, of course. I would never really do that. I just hate the thought that you can't have a normal relationship because of this. It's just not fair for either of us. To be completely honest, at this point I'd almost consider surrendering the crown if I thought these scoundrels who were trying to oust me from the throne would be any good. But they only want power. They have no interest in protecting the people. <sighs> but then, who am I to talk about protecting the people? I'm putting everything at risk because of my personal feelings. I... Oh, my love. I didn't mean to imply that I regret being with you. I would never think that. It's just all so much more complicated than it ought to be. Scoot a little closer, love. I want to hold you. Oh, dear. I... No, it's all right. Everything will be all right. That code and knock just meant that the guards are executing a contingency plan. I don't know exactly what... I don't know exactly why they found it necessary, but I've employed body doubles for us. They look similar enough to be mistaken as us from far away, but they look very different close up. The idea is that if anyone in port never shows up here claiming to have seen either of us, the doubles will speak with them and make them think they mistook the doubles for us. Of course, that means someone traced us back here. I was expecting something like that to happen eventually, but just not so soon. Shh, it's okay. I've been very careful about all this. They'll probably try to demand entry, but there's nothing they can actually do. They wouldn't dare claim that they suspect the king has a secret lover. If they couldn't immediately prove that they were right, they'd be discredited and hardly anyone would believe them from that point forward. Hmm? What is it, love? A stranger? What do you mean? He took interest in you? When did this happen? Oh, my love. If a stranger starts questioning you after you get out of the carriage coming from the safe house, then that's a serious matter. You should have mentioned this to me the moment you saw me again. <laughs> I suppose that's fair. When you arrived yesterday, I immediately swept you off your feet and started chasing you all over. And then, well, you were very distracted for the rest of the day, let's say. I suppose I didn't give you much of a chance for such talk. To tell you the truth, I was more prepared for eyes on me than you. They must have found this place by following the carriage back after you got out. I'll have to come up with an excuse for why you were in it. Maybe claim that the carriage driver simply saw you on the road and gave you a ride. Oh, so that's what you told them. That's my clever mage. Well, after this, they'll have no choice but to accept that answer then. But we'll need to be more careful about how you leave from now on. Perhaps we'll start having you switch carriages partway through. Of course, we'll have to vary when and where you switch. Hmm. Did you hear that? Exactly. The talking stopped outside. Perhaps I'll just take a careful peek. Whew. The snooper's gone. Looks like they were successfully rebutted. It makes me wonder what the dissidents are planning exactly. I haven't been able to figure out exactly how much they know. Clearly they have some idea that I'm sneaking around with someone, but it's hard to say whether they're certain of it. Or are they just pursuing a hunch? I wish we could just be rid of them. My spies have had very little success rooting them out. Part of me worries that there's a mole. But if my spies were compromised, then I would expect that they would have already outed us. There must be some other reason they're so difficult to find. Oh, but listen to me, Larry. All that this incident proves is that we need to cherish our time together even more. I love you so much. You really mean the world to me, my love. It's funny. Many people say they want their lover to make them feel like royalty. But what I love about you is that you make me feel like a man. When I'm with you, I don't feel so separated. 
being a king can be lonely sometimes. Everyone treats me like I'm somehow above everything, like I'm a completely different kind of being, one without all the full wolves and cravings of an ordinary human. I appreciate the respect, but it puts so much pressure on me. But you, when I'm with you, I can just be human. I can laugh and cry, and I can love. What's wrong, dear? You're being very quiet. Oh, don't worry about that. It's not your fault that you were suspected. It was bound to happen eventually, and I was more than prepared for it. If anything, I'm proud of how quick thinking you were to deny any connection to the carriage's destination. Some would have just said the carriage came from somewhere else, which wouldn't have helped it if we were followed. You did well. You don't need to feel so much pressure to keep our secret. We do want to keep it a secret, of course, but that falls mostly on me. I'm the one with all the resources to keep us hidden, after all. Hmm? A new spell? Well, of course, my love. I'd be delighted to see it. I... Oh, my love. You look entirely different. Is that an illusion? I've seen you cast illusions before, but they never look so lifelike. Why, this is perfect. If you can do this, then it will become practically impossible for us to be caught. Why didn't you mention it before? Oh, you adorable silly thing. You need to put such thoughts out of your mind. There's not a single aspect of you that isn't good enough. Your magic is fit for my royal court, and you are fit for me. You're abundantly gifted, and you don't do yourself any favors by denying it. This is going to change a lot of my plans. I suppose we should still try to avoid needing your spell in the first place. You've mentioned some of your weaknesses magic can have, but overall we probably don't need to be quite so cautious. Why, we could actually go out in public together. Oh, I would just love to go dancing with you. We have the ballroom here, of course, but it's so much better when there are other people around. Ah, but let's worry about planning for the future another time. It's still early, and I'd rather cuddle in bed with you. Hmm, just think. Someday, we won't even need a spell in order to be out in public. I can just picture you sitting next to me in the throne room, or writing with me on my litter. When the time comes, I want everyone to know you're mine. I want them to see you as more than just a traveling entertainer, albeit a talented one who performs for royalty. Perhaps it's good that we've had this time where we had to meet in secret, though. I've always been used to getting everything that I want. And even though I have you, I haven't been able to have you in the way that I want. In a way where everyone can see us. It's taught me that even when I don't get everything I want, I can still be so perfectly happy. And really, it's kind of fun sneaking around. I could do without the high stakes, but otherwise it's almost like a game. A game with you as the prize. <laughs> and what a prize you are. I love you ever so much, my dear. Now come here. <laughs>